Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Today we are looking at some new malicious compliance stories. Please let me know what you think about today's video in the comment section below. The first story is called Banking Compliance. In the 70s, with the UK suffering a recession and work hard to come by, my then childless dad had an opportunity to move to Dubai to work. My mom was able to go with him. They had accommodation provided, a good income, higher than the UK equivalent would have been and were able to fly over and check everything out before committing. All in all, a great opportunity. They took the plunge and decided, as they had no accommodation costs in Dubai, they would keep paying the mortgage on their UK house so it would be available to them if and when they returned. My parents had a UK current account with one bank, let's call them goodish. But their mortgage and savings account was with a different bank, let's call them Muppets. Every month that salary was paid into his current account with Goodish and he'd then phone them to ask them to move money into his savings account with Muppets, as this is the account his mortgage payments came from. He never had any problems. One day mom writes a check from the Goodish account, then later realizes the account will not have sufficient funds to cover it. No problem, for dad. I'll give Muppets a call and ask them to move some money back out of the savings. Unfortunately, Muppets didn't want to transfer money out of their account. So they informed Dad that the only way he can remove money from that account is in the branch, in person, using his savings book. Now, Muppets didn't have a Dubai branch in the 70s, the only way he could comply would be to travel 3500 miles home. Frustrated at their repeated refusal to help, Dad resolves the immediate check issue another way and looks at the larger problem when he'll next be in the UK. Fast forward a couple of months and Dad is back in the UK. Armed with his little savings book, he strolls into his local branch of Muppets and asks for confirmation of his savings balance and mortgage balance. He then hands over the mandatory savings book and requests to withdraw the full savings account balance in cash. Dad then pays off the outstanding mortgage in full and asks for an envelope of the excess. Dad then closes the savings account, walks to Goodish and deposits the remaining savings. The bank manager tried to stop this from happening, but once Dad pointed out that he technically isn't able to transfer money into his savings account without using the savings book, he had no way to pay the mortgage. The mortgage itself had no restriction on early repayment and thus he could do what he liked with his own money. The next story is called Emergency Visit. I work as a field service engineer. This means that I go to a variety of sites to do specialized work on a variety of different equipment. I have a customer that requires a one hour flight to get to. And usually I go there once every two months. They had a bunch of big staff changes on site over the last few years and that made the site more and more awkward to deal with. They have this analyzer that I service for them. It requires chemical reagents to take measurements. One day they report to me that they are having issues with the analyzer and want me on the site ASAP. I ask a few questions to try and see what's going on and they very grudgingly give answers. It was too much effort for the manager to bother looking into it or to allow the lowly operator to contact me directly. From what little information I do get, I'm thinking that they've run out of reagents. It has never happened before on this site because the operator knew what he was doing. He kept a close eye on the reagent levels and checked them once a week. And he changed them when needed and got replacements ordered when needed too. These aren't things that they can bulk buy for the year and forget about. The shelf life isn't great and a bottle of reagent could last from 3 months to 18 months depending on the reagent. And the analyzer required 10 separate reagents. So there's a little bit of effort required to manage the reagents properly and keep everything going. Before this issue, the operator was allowed to order stuff themselves. Now everything needed to be approved by a big boss manager guy who had a very high opinion of himself. And he didn't think it is necessary to order replacement reagents when the operator said they were needed. I tell him that the issue looks like the analyzer is out of reagents and I'm pretty sure they don't have any spare, so there's no point in me going to the site unless they have those. 
And as we had crowded them after my previous service for reagents, the operator asked me to and we hadn't received an order from them yet, I knew they weren't ordered. The manager guy insisted I come over, emailing me with a bunch of high up stuff on site CC'd. I reply with a date to travel over, asking if the date is okay and restating my concerns about the lack of reagents and that they have several weeks of lead time. I get to the site a couple of days later and do an inspection on the analyzer. And what a surprise, a bunch of the reagent bottles are empty. Everything else looks fine, so there is nothing I can do. One or two people are getting a bit grumpy with me that the analyzer isn't working. But I restate everything about the reagents. Why hadn't this happened before? Well, your operator was allowed to get stuff ordered himself and now he's not. Someone never signed off on that a few weeks ago. Guess I see you in a few weeks for the next service visit after the new reagents arrive. Oh, and here is an invoice for a couple of thousand euro for this emergency visit that you insisted on having. I hope you enjoyed today's video so far. If you like the video, don't forget to press the like button. It really helps. And now on to the next story. The third story is called Check your employee handbook. This story happened about 14 years ago when I worked for a now defunct electronics store in the UK. At the time I was a teenager and reliant on public transport to get to work. There was only one bus an hour to this out of town retail park and it was scheduled to arrive at 8.55. This theoretically would give me enough time to walk from the bus stop to the store ready to start my shift at 9am. However, on many occasions the bus was late due to traffic. So I'd sometimes arrive at work at 9.05, which wasn't a problem because the store was usually quiet until 11am. And the manager accepted that I would make up any of this time at the end of my shift. So this went on for about a year with no problems until a new deputy manager was brought in from another store. She was a clock watcher and wanted me to be there at 9am every day and wasn't accepting any excuses for buses being late or anything else. I asked her if I could simply change my shift 10 minutes back, which I thought was reasonable. She refuses completely and told me, you have to be on time for your shift. Check your employee handbook, it's right there. I did check my employee handbook and it did state exactly what she said. But on the same page, it said that every employee working a shift longer than 6 hours is entitled to a 60 minute uninterrupted lunch break. Uninterrupted is the keyword here. Later that day, I was about halfway through my lunch break in the staff room when she came in there. She said that the shop floor was busy, there are not enough salespeople out there and there's a customer waiting to buy a plasma TV. Nobody volunteered, so she specifically picked me and told me to go and serve the customer and then come back to continue my lunch break. This wasn't uncommon and it wasn't really a problem, usually. I served the customer, processed the sale and then went back to the staff room to continue my break. 50 minutes later she comes back to the staff room with a face like thunder asking why I'm still on my lunch break. You should have been back out on the shop floor 20 minutes ago. Why are you still in here? I calmly replied that I still have 10 minutes left on my 60 minute uninterrupted lunch break. I explained that by taking me off lunch 30 minutes early that wasn't an uninterrupted lunch break. Then I smiled and told her, check the employee handbook, it's right there. She was furious. She went to the store manager and said I'd taken an extra long lunch break. When he came in to speak to me, I explained to him that my break was interrupted by the deputy manager. She protested and said that just because I have to spend a few minutes with a customer doesn't mean I'm entitled to an extra 30 minute break. The store manager wasn't happy with the situation, but agreed that I was entitled to my uninterrupted break as per company policy. By now it was time for me to go back out on the shop floor, so I put my lunchbox back in my locker and left. She didn't talk to me for the rest of the day, but she didn't ask any of us to serve customers during our lunch breaks ever again either. The last story is called Dealing with a Mean Teacher. When I was in high school, I ended up moving across the state to live with my great aunt. My dad passed away and he was my last living parent. When I transferred schools, the guidance counselor knew of the situation and was sure to make sure all of my teachers knew about my situation. 
They informed them so they wouldn't mention my parents and I was allowed to leave if I got upset. Most teachers were very understanding and would make sure I felt supported. My English teacher was not one of those people. She really didn't like me and I never understood why. She would do petty things like asking questions then having me answer even though I didn't have my hand up because I didn't know the answer. She would then make fun of me. She would mark my papers down for something but not my friends who had the same mistake. She would take my phone even though at first she said we could use our phones and would only take mine. I kinda just took her crap until she kept saying she would call my parents knowing they were no longer alive. She would say this almost every class period. After class one day I asked to speak with her and asked her to please stop mentioning my parents because it upsets me and I was given permission to leave class to calm down. All she said was it's her classroom and she can do what she wants and if I don't like it I should go whine to the principal but he'll side with her. I walked away heated. But the next day I tried to ask her to stop one more time and she replied with the same whine to the principal. So as an angry obedient kid I did what she told me to. I told the principal everything, crying like a little baby. He was upheld and promised it would be fixed. The next day the mean teacher continued to be a jerk. But this day was special. She decided she would take my phone and not give it back until my parents came to pick it up. I was in tears and said they can't which she knew. For some reason I snapped that day. When she said that she was done with me and will be calling my parents I angrily screamed back. Good luck, I don't think they have good service 6 feet under. It would be easier to buy a Uja board to speak to them since they are dead. Everyone was shocked and kinda staring. A minute later the principal comes in and the mean teacher has a smirk thinking she won. Oh no sweetie, you did not. He sternly told her to go to her conference room and they would be having a meeting with him and me. He was standing outside the door since the class has begun and heard everything. I spare you all the screaming details but long story short she was fired. On her way out she blamed me and told me I shouldn't have gone to the principal. I smiled sweetly and said well you said if I didn't like it I should whine to the principal. What a horrible person this teacher was. I hope she is never again allowed to work in education. What do you think? Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day and stay safe. Bye bye.